I mean, I, I would agree when I started um, S3, which started out more as a, my initial vision of it was more of a media platform where women shared their um, honest stories to help lift up and inspire other women because for me, it was my storytelling roots. And so um, when I decided to start it, I was was really good at PR, but it wasn't necessarily what was inspiring me at that point after after leaving Channel 9. Um, the problem is, is I'd never started anything like that before. And so I was putting a lot of work um, and a lot of effort into it, but I wasn't really able to monetize it. And I can remember talking to a lot of people, and I guess this would be you know, something that I would recommend is, at least in my personal journey, um, people will give you all sorts of different advice, but I find it very helpful to to just talk to people. So if there's, you know, if Amy's around, I might want to talk to her problem with Amy and, and get her input, but it's okay to be honest. It's okay to say I don't have all the answers. Yes. And when you're, I think when you're, when you're um, vulnerable, maybe a little bit vulnerable or honest or, um, you know, can have be real and, you um, have that kind of open conversation with other people, you don't know what sort of doors are going to also be opened. So I remember talking to someone in the community about S3 and my dreams for it. And through the course of a couple of different conversations, that's when they were like, well, have you ever thought about products? And I was like, no, I never have thought about products. Would you ever be interested in doing hair products? I was like, well, you know, why not? And so that's how it kind of ended up pivoting into not what my initial vision was, but it's still there. It's still a company that can empower and still a company um, that's moving forward and providing value to women all over. So um, again, I go off on tangents and I don't know no, if that answered it, um, but there are always going to be obstacles. And I think you just can't personalize them. Like, why did this happen to me? obstacles throw themselves in front of everybody they're very tricky like that so I think you just have to roll up your sleeves and uh, try to work the problem it's your turn but can I jump off on that for one second yeah <laughs> one obstacle I had when I was trying to get funding to build the bell winery I needed 5.3 million dollars to build my dream place and it was a lot of money to ask for in 2010 five four banks denied me and so what I want to say is though that was an obstacle, right? I didn't have the money. I didn't have the funding. And you would think that after four banks told me no, I might have said, you know, maybe, maybe they, maybe this is not such a great idea. But what I did was I looked, instead of saying, oh, woe is me, oh, they never give women any money, which is true. Oh, <laughs> you know, it sucks to be me. I guess I'll have to stay at my corporate job forever. I didn't do the victim thing. I instead looked inward and I said, you know what? You're, you haven't done a good job, Amy, of writing a business plan that these people can get behind. So I looked inward and I redid my whole presentation. I redid the numbers. I redid it so they could see that I was going to make it work no matter what. And then the fifth bank gave me the money. So you, you, you've got to be careful about that victim mentality. You have to work it out yourself. You are in control. You can be a motorcycle mechanic. You can, you can get the bank to give you the money. You just have to want it and want to do that work yeah right yeah I'm going to jump off both of your points yeah, that was amazing <laughs> um I agree with you because I was also denied by a bunch of banks both times mm -hmm. yep and it's ridiculous because I do feel like and I I've never liked back then 10 years ago I never liked to say like oh it's because I'm a woman but it does have something to do with it just that yeah um, but again, same as you, I went back, rewrote my plan, changed my presentation, tried to tried some other way to present the data, and eventually you get a yes, but you just have to keep at it. Um, so Isn't it fun it, when you run into those bankers now? Is, I run into those guys at, at events at the winery now, and I'm yeah. like, hey, you're fine. Thank you. It worked out. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It sounds funny. One of them actually apologized to me finally. Like, oh, it's great. He was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And then to your point, I've always, I, I mean, we face so many obstacles, but I've, I've always um, recognized that I don't know everything. And I've always asked other people for help. So I've called lawyers, accountants, my dad, my uncles, my cousins, like whoever is around, my husband, like my sisters who are also entrepreneurs. Like, I, it's just really important to surround yourself with people who are 
in the, you know, interested in, like you said at the beginning, lifting each other up and helping each other out because we're, you know, we're kind of all in this entrepreneur life together and we have to support each other. So 